If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast, one of the top five betting podcasts in the world. Just Google it. No matter where you go, I can almost guarantee we will come up in the top five if you say best NFL betting podcast, best NFL gambling podcast. Doesn't really matter. I'm Ross Tucker, former NFL offensive lineman. I think most of you know that. Five teams, seven years, classic journeyman. And I love this podcast. I love giving you guys my bets for the games each week. And I love talking with the number one professional better of our lifetimes, in my mind, the great Steve Fezzik at Fezzik Sports on social media. Let me just say this again, guys, only at Fezzik Sports. I keep seeing people tweeting me and at real Steve Fezzik. That guy is an imposter. Block him. Report him. At Real Steve Fezzik is trying to steal your money. In fact, I have guys from college I know that actually lost money with him. Do not do anything with At Real Steve Fezzik. He's At Fake Steve Fezzik. The Real Steve Fezzik, who's on the show every week, is At Fezzik Sports. Very, very important. And he won't cut side deals with you to give you picks. It's at pregame.com. If you want them, very, very important. Speaking of important, Steve, we needed it, buddy. We needed it. We had the week that we had been waiting for. We had it. Steve was up 11 units, got every bet right. I was up eight units. So for the year, Steve, I'm now up 27 units. And you went from being in the red to being in the black overnight. You are now up nine units on this show with an unbelievable week. We were three and zero on our best bets. We're seventeen and twelve now on our best bets this season. That is a strike rate of fifty nine percent. I have been waiting for us to have one of these weeks, Steve, and we had it. Yeah, it's time to show everybody that the uh, the battleship Death Star is now fully operational. Let's start blasting the sports books. Love it. Let's start with the Thanksgiving Day games, which were good for us. You went a three-unit bet on the Lions getting 10. I went two units to make it a best bet. Boy, that was a great call. They lost by three. Very close game. Then the Giants and the Cowboys, I took the Giants getting the nine and a half. That was a fortunate backdoor cover, I would say, and that Maher misses the field goal, and then the Giants go down and get the touchdown. However, the Giants got screwed on their first touchdown with an eligible man downfield penalty, and the holding penalty on Darnay Holmes was garbage as well. At any rate, Steve, the ticket cash is two units for the Giants. Yeah, and whenever you're getting double digits, you know that's why we prefer catching 10 versus laying 10. It's kind of like everything has to go right usually for the favorite to cover. The favorite can kill the underdog. Look no further. Two teams are covered, Miami and Kansas City, specifically the Miami game. Miami beat the on the Houston Texans like I've never seen someone beat on someone before. Maybe, maybe the original Rocky movie. But um, they covered by one and a half points. That's it. Uh, it's hard to cover double digits in the NFL. Well, as I always say, Steve, from a player's perspective, they're not trying to cover the spread. They're they're not trying to cover. They're just trying to win the game. So especially when the spread's double digits like that, they don't really care. They don't, they're not playing to win by nine and a half. They're just playing. Except if if you're talking about Michigan's Harbaugh, and then he really does just play to cover the spread, but he's the exception to this rule. That was something else. All right. Patriots Vikings, I leaned Vikings, uh, you leaned Patriots. Dolphins Texans, neither one of us had anything. Jags Ravens, I put two units on the Jags and they win the game outright. They were getting four points at home. You leaned Jags, so that was a pretty good one as well. Then we get to Bucks Browns. 
I leaned Browns. You put two units on the Browns, Steve. They were getting three and a half. They win the game outright. That was a fortunate catch by Njoku in the end zone, but I still think that was a pretty even game as a right side to be on. You know, I actually disagree. I Even though I won my bet, I watched the whole game, and I was like, they're not going to score. They're not going to score. Ross, they're not going to score. Then again, but then a guy catches the ball blindfolded like this. Okay, they scored. I'll take it. The only loss either one of us had was Falcons Commanders. And I had the Falcons getting four on the road. That last field goal that they let the Commanders get to go up by six rather than three, that hurt. Uh, But then the Falcons second and goal. And the ball gets tipped. No touchdown. They get intercepted. Then they rough the punter to take away another chance. That that was brutal. That was tough for me to watch. Bengals, Titans. You leaned Titans. The Bengals able to cover that spread. That surprised me. We actually also both had the Titans in some teasers. We both had Titans, Panthers. Titans up to seven and a half. Panthers up to eight and a half. So that was two units for both of us on a best bet. You also paired the Titans with the Eagles. So you got four units out of the Titans, keeping that one close. I thought they were going to win the game outright. That was impressive by the Bengals to get that done. Bears, Jets, we both lean Bears. We didn't know Fields wasn't going to play last week. That's worthless. Broncos, Panthers, we both had Panthers in that teaser with the Titans. They won the game outright. Steve, it is hard to believe how bad the Broncos are. It really is. It's hard to believe how despised Russell Wilson is by his own team. That and It's just shocking. Who's going to want this guy? So if, I, I, a sure thing Hall of Famer, maybe not so much anymore. Right, Ross? Well, you know what is a sure thing? Getting someone food for the holidays. Get them Omaha Steaks. America's original butcher since 1917. Nobody is ever upset when you send them steaks or burgers or chicken or filet or whatever. Nobody, literally nobody. Everybody can use that, throw them in the freezer. Then they have it next time they want to grill out or whatever. Here's the deal. Omaha Steaks is ready to ship your order right away. I know you don't know what to get somebody in your life. Get them some meat. Go to omahasteaks.com and use the promo code ROSS at checkout. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com, use promo code ROSS at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order, minimum order may be required awesome 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 all right next up raiders seahawks the seahawks we both lean to they weren't able to cover because of that move by jacobs in overtime but it was just a lean chargers cardinals we both leaned to the chargers wait Were the Chargers getting four and a half or were they laying four and a half? They were laying the big line move went from Chargers minus four and a half. Closed Chargers minus two when news that Murray was going to play and was actually healthy. Yes. Rams, Chiefs, we had nothing. You leaned to the Chiefs. Then we get to, and uh, they were able to cover. Saints, Niners, we had nothing. And then Packers, Eagles, we each had the Eagles in a teaser. You had them with the Titans. I had them with the Steelers in the Keystone State teaser. You had them too. You had three teasers last week, Steve. They all came through for you. That was another best bet. Steelers up to eight and a half, one outright. Eagles down to minus one. They covered. So two more units for me, two more units for you. Two more units on the best bet for us. Pretty awesome. Uh, Awesome week. Again, for the week, Steve's up 11 units. He was 
made all of his bets. I was up eight units for the year. I'm up 27. Steve is up nine. And our best bets are now 17 and 12, a 59% strike rate. We move on this week, Steve. And the Thursday night game is an awesome one. It's the Bills. It's the Patriots. It's in Foxborough. It reminds me of Labatt Blue Light. There is no better way to watch your team or the Thursday night game than with the pristine Canadian goodness of a cold Labatt Blue Light in your hand. Stock up and be the MVP of your tailgate and share a Labatt on game day with your crew. Always enjoy responsibly beer. Labatt USA, Buffalo, New York. The Bills, wow. Literally 15 minutes ago, the Bills were laying five. Now it's down to the uh, the Bills laying four and a half, Steve. Your thoughts? Yeah, New England's going to win this game. Uh, I like the Thursday uh, coaching staff for the Patriots. The Bills have the flu. The Bills have this ridiculous week last week where they have the epic snowstorm. They're in. De- they were in Detroit. They come back home. They go back to Detroit. So a whole lot of travel. A team, uh, not key players, but a bunch of players have the flu. I don't know who's going to win this game, and that means I'm on the Patriots plus four and a half, two units. Absolutely agree. Totally with you. Was very impressed by how Mac Jones and the Patriots played on offense the other night. It was actually the special teams that let them down as much as anything, which is rare for Belichick. And the Bills aren't playing that great. They're just not playing that great right now. I don't know why, but they're not. Give me New England plus four and a half, two units. We start off with the best bet. The best bet. Denver is in Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Ravens laying eight and a half after that debacle in Jacksonville. The total is 38. I should point out the total for Buffalo, New England is 43 and a half. Yeah, Baltimore should win this game. So I'll play a teaser. Uh, I'll tease Baltimore down to two and a half. You know what? I'll tease them with the Detroit Lions from one and a half up to plus seven and a half. Two teams, six point NFL teaser. I'm with you thinking the same thing. I got the Ravens at uh, minus eight and a half down to minus two and a half. And I'm going to pair them with the Giants up to, you know what? Just so we have a best bet, I'll do the same thing you did. I'll go Detroit up to plus seven and a half just so we can pair it together and have another best bet. I'm in on that same teaser as you, Steve. The best bet. Next up, we've got the Tennessee Titans and the Philadelphia Eagles. The Titans are getting five. So I'm going to just lean to the Titans, but there is a – I'm going to pull back the curtain. There's a lesson here in this game. So just last week, Green Bay – was at Philly and the line was six and a half. And right before post, we saw money come on Green Bay such that that line dropped to six. So now if we compare Green Bay and Tennessee, there is no comparison. Tennessee is much better than Green Bay. And you could have bet Tennessee plus six and a half last week. And you knew that that was a good bet. How do you know that? Because you you could see that they, the betters were taking Green Bay, of all things, plus six and a half at Philly. If they like Green Bay at six and a half, they're going to love Tennessee at six and a half. Well, it's no longer six and a half, so opportunity lost there on the key number. I'll still lean Titans here, uh, but just a strong lean. Yeah, two units for me on the Titans. I think it's a low-scoring game. I think it's a close game. I'm impressed. I mean, the Titans always keep every game close, so I feel like it's a field goal game. Give me the Titans getting the five points. How about the Jets and the Vikings, Steve? How about the Jets and the Vikings? Three points, totals 46. So I make this game three. That means it's going to be very difficult for me to find a profitable wager when the line is three. If it should happen to move, I would lay two and a half. I would take three and a half. I pass for now. 
I'm passing as well. Same logic. Browns, Texans, Browns are laying seven points. I have no idea how Watson is going to play. Will he be rusty? I have no idea how the reaction will be with this former team and who that favors. Too much uncertainty. I know the Texans stink, so I don't want them. I pass the game. Me as well. I don't know what to expect from Deshaun Watson for the same logic, same reasoning. Commanders, Giants. Giants are getting two and a half at home. Totals 40 and a half. All right. So another teaser opportunity. And by the way, I got a little criticism. I got a note. Fezzik, you just play the long teasers. You tease through the three and seven. You're not creative. This criticism is like asking a, a professional blackjack player, you know, why do you always like stand on 12 against a five? Okay, actually a bad example because you would hit it on a negative count. But the um, the point is there's certain mathematical certainties when you're betting as a professional gambler. You can only tease long teasers. All the other teasers are wrong. They're just mathematically wrong. There can be a plus expected value teaser that's not a long teaser, but it's only a plus bet because the original bet is good as well, and you should just be betting it. If you like a team plus four and a half, for instance, and you love them, just bet them plus four and a half. Don't tease them to ten and a half. But uh, in this case, there's lots of really good long teasers this week. We're going to tease the Giants. Um, I get it. I got Washington, the slightly better team. There's no way I would expect Washington to win by double digits in this game, however. So I'll tease the Giants up to eight and a half, and I'll take it with the Raiders from two up to eight, plus eight, two team, six point NFL teaser. Um, love it. Uh, I'll do the same. Giants, Raiders. I had them both written down as teaser legs. So same thing. Give me the Giants and the Raiders. Best bet, two units. The best bet. Now we've got the Jags and Lions. We already talked about this one. Totals 51 and a half. Lions are getting one and a half. We both teased the Lions up to um, seven and a half and paired them with Baltimore. Anything else, Steve? Yeah, I want to talk about these games that are lying close to pick them because we just flipped favorites. We had the Lions favored small and now Jacksonville favored small. In your own betting, whether you're laying one or taking one, it doesn't make a great um, difference. However, when you're looking at teasers, it makes all the difference in the world. I'll let the odds makers decide on this game. If you would have made the Lions a one-half point favorite, I would have teased the Jags. Sure, I'll take Jacksonville 7 half. Should be a high-scoring close game. 27-23, I don't know who's going to win. So you, the odds makers can put me on whichever team they want. And right now they have Jacksonville favorite. So boom, it's the Lions that went into my teaser. Totally agree. Let's go um, Packers, Bears, Packers laying three. Way too much uncertainty. I don't know who's quarterbacking either team. You know what? When I'm sports betting for a living, especially early in the week, I want to play, I don't want to play chess. I don't want to play backgammon. I don't even want to play checkers. I want to play tick, tack, toe. I want to find clear cut best bets. This one has too many moving parts. I pass. Agreed. Steelers laying one against the Falcons, total 43 and a half. So another game, it's going to be a close game. That's all these teams do. All right. Who's favored? They The DraftKings made Pittsburgh favored. Bang. That means I'm going to tease Atlanta. I need to get it up to seven and a half. So I'm going to play a six and a half point teaser with Atlanta. You know, I'm a little reluctant to play a road favorite, but what the heck? I need to have one more leg and I want to diversify. I think the Rams are truly awful. I'm going to take Seattle in the, in the second part of my teaser down to minus one half, two team NFL teaser, six and a half points. Yeah, I got nothing on that game. Dolphins, Niners, Dolphins are getting four, totals 46. I like the Dolphins getting the four, Steve, two units. So it's, it's bet on versus bet on. I really like the Niners. We've hit a tipping point. I've got the Niners, my best team in the NFC, but Miami's playing great. Totally misleading final. Miami was up 30 to nothing at halftime. I see why you want to back the Dolphins, um, and I want to back the Dolphins, but just not against – 
a 49er team that by the end of the year is not just going to be the best team in the NFC. Bold prediction. They might become the best team in the NFL. Seahawks, Rams. Seahawks are laying eight on the road. Total 41. So I don't know if I've ever seen this before. Really curious line move. Seattle was minus five yesterday. And boom, big move comes in minus seven. I assume word gets out Stafford's not going to play again. And then half an hour later, it gets hit again from minus seven to minus eight. So think about this. There's like one group that just pounds bets against the Rams. And there's a second group that says, you know, we don't care. We missed the minus five. We'll lay the seven. Some um, heavy artillery coming in. Seemingly on a weekly basis, anti-Rams, the worst Super Bowl champion in the history of sports. I'm teasing the Seahawks down from minus eight to minus two and pairing them with the Bengals from plus two up to plus eight, two units. What about Chiefs Bengals? Bengals are getting two at home. Total is 52 and a half. You know, I'm going to make this my square ball best bet for me of the week. You know what? It's going to be a shootout. It's going to be 33-30. Scoring is going up in the NFL. Um, I get it. The Bengals have a good defense. But the Bengals have a really good offense now. And the Chiefs have probably an, an, a slightly above average defense and a great offense. All these teams do is play 31-30 type games. We're going to go over 52 and a half, two units. Sling is easy to set up, easy to use. Now you can try it for half off. Just visit sling.com slash DraftKings to sign up today. Watch every touchdown live every Sunday afternoon with NFL Red Zone on Sling. For a limited time, get Sling Blue and add on Sports Extra with NFL Red Zone for half off your first month. That's right. You get the best deal on Red Zone so you can catch all the touchdowns at the lowest price with Sling TV. Visit sling.com slash DraftKings to sign up today. What about Chargers Raiders? We both already teased the Raiders up to plus eight. Totals 50 and a half. Anything else there, Steve? I just think it's um, – I'm teasing the Raiders, but I do have concerns specifically. This is the game, if you recall, last year where these two teams almost tied. They're playing for a playoff berth. The Chargers needed a tie, and they gave up a goal and penalty kicks, I think. Oh, no, wrong sport. But they Raiders wind up winning an overtime game there. Uh, that concerns me a little bit, but I still think it's going to be a close game. So Raiders teasers are good. Cowboys laying 10 and a half against the Colts. I like the Colts getting the 10 and a half, two units. Cowboys not to be trusted as a road favorite. I agree directionally, but you know what? I think I'm going to get more points because I think the Colts just lost that primetime game with a miserable performance. By the way, Ross, I don't know if you're aware of this. You're allowed to call timeout in an NFL game. I wanted to ask you, so the Colts obviously should be using a timeout. Tick, tick, tick. The coach blows it. As the quarterback of the team, or even the running back, or even the center on the team, anyone can call a timeout. Is that, is that correct? Correct. So Correct. Quarterback would certainly be thinking about it. That's for sure. Now, if you were playing in that game, would, could you have just taken matters in your own hands, put your job security on the line, and just said, screw it, I'm calling a timeout. Everyone else is a dumb dumb. Yes, but I would never do that, and neither would any player. Right, because it's just too the, – the implications are too great, and it's not your job, right? But, but the quarterback, it's on him. He's got to call timeout there. Anything else on that game, Steve? I have nothing. Just I'll lean with the Colts with you. Saints, Bucks, Bucks laying three and a half. Totals 39 and a half. What do you got? I, I don't understand how the line can move this much. The Saints are not as good as the Bucs. The Bucs are clearly the superior team. This line dropped from six all the way to three and a half. You know what? Some people are betting a whole lot of money on New Orleans. My ratings don't agree. They agree to take Saints plus six, not take Saints plus five and four. At three and a half, I'll lay it. Tampa Bay, two units. I'm going against this team. I got nothing on this game. I don't like to lay three and a half. Um, that'll do it for us. Bunch of best bets again. Good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. 
Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.